So in this video, we're going to talk about um, creating context and creating a virtual private database. And there are several steps involved in this particular example. And I think um, we might need to do this for the OCM exam. And it, every time I go to try to do this, I get um, overwhelmed, I guess. But maybe it's best to think not the steps in the order in which you need to do them, but maybe the steps going backward. So for a virtual private database, at the table level, every table has to have a policy associated with it to add the extra um, where clause to, um, to uh, filter out um, the, the data that's specific. So for example, in this example, what we're going to do is we're going to have a uh, customer orders, and the customers are going to be able to sign in, but the customers can see only their orders. So they're going to look at this customers table, but their own but their logins are going to filter out only the data that's relevant to them, only the data that's relevant to their customer number. So, so the first step, or if we're going backwards, the last step is to create a policy on each table that's, that will filter out um, the relevant columns or relevant rows for that particular user. So if we have a policy, then we must also have to have a get context function so that that would be the the uh, extra predicate that will go to the, uh, um, the in the SQL statement. So we have policy, we have a, have to have a get context function. If we have a get context function, we must have created a context and we must have a set context procedure or package because the context, creating a context specifies a particular package or procedure. And so Presumably, there's also a login trigger for these particular users that are logging in. Again, we're going to start with an existing schema that has, um, say, customer orders, and these customers, we're going to have to create those users, and they have to f have to have a policy that filters out all the rows that's only relevant to them. You know, so. So they're going to have to have select on the base tables. They're going to have to have permissions, but the policy is going to have to restrict the rows just the, to them. <clears throat> we could also create a, um, a specific user that manages um, the contexts, uh, and we can do that, uh, but that user would also have to have select on the base tables and any other table that might be used for a lookup. In this particular case, we do have our base tables, but we're going to create a lookup table that's um, that it needs to look up in the uh, set context procedure to assign from for customer one needs to look at customers one data, customer two needs to look at customers two's data, that, so on and so forth. So he needs some extra permissions in addition to the standard um, system related permissions so that he can create context and what have you. So in this section what we're going to do is we're going to actually create our schema and presumably during the OCM exam the, system, the schema already exists. Let's go ahead and log in and I have some scripts ready. So. So let's look at the um, create schema owner in table and discuss it. <clears throat> okay, so in this script, what we're doing is we're going to create the base tables. Uh, um, so the, the schema owner is called OCM, and he has a table that's called customer orders that has the customer data in it. And the purpose of this exercise is to ultimately create some users called T Brook and O Woods and they're going to be able to log in, but they're going to only see their own data. So we're going to create some pol a policy on this table so they can only look on uh, their data and not the other guy's data. Uh, um, I'm also creating a lookup table. The lookup table uh, needs to be um, <clears throat> examined by the, by the, uh, um, the owner of not just the policies, but the person who's creating these contexts. So he needs to look this up um, in his function and decide, okay, if T. Brook is logging in, then his customer number is 1234. If O. Woods is logging in, then his customer number is 5678. And then when we create a policy, uh, um, <coughs> user whose customer number is 5678 only sees 5678's data. So, okay, so we're going to go ahead and create um, the schema.
All right, in this section, we're going to create two users. These are the customers that are going to look at the customer orders. And one customer is called T. Brook, and the other one's called O. Woods. So we're just going to go ahead and create those users, and we're going to grant them permissions to see the particular table, the customer orders table. So I'm going to show you those scripts right now. So, um, actually, let's do this. Let's look at create other users. Okay, so here we're going to create the T Brook and the O Woods user. So let's go ahead and do that. actually going to grant them permissions on the schema objects. Now in my notes I actually create a VPD admin user who um, is going to administer the, um, the uh, uh, contacts and create the context functions. But in this case I'm going to create it as sys just, just to differentiate between the two but if we need to create a VPD admin we can look at our notes and see how that's done as well. So right now I'm just going to grant the permissions of these T. Brook and O. Woods user to the um, customer orders table. All right, so in this step, what we're going to do is create the context. So let's take a look at that. In this case, we're going to create this thing called the OCM context, and you, when you create a context, you specify a procedure or package associated with it. So um, after this step, we're going to create this procedure or package. So let's go ahead and create it. So in this next step, we're going to create the procedure or package associated with that context that we just created. Let's take a look at it. Here we actually set the context. So uh, um, in the previous step I created a context and I referenced this particular procedure or package. In this case it's a procedure. <clears throat> What I'm going to do is create a context that um, is associated with a customer number. So in this case, I'm actually going to look up that, uh, look in the lookup table, find the customer number associated with the login. So when T. Wood logs in, T. Brook logs in, we'll know that what his customer number is, or when O. Woods logs in, we'll know what his customer is. And then later, we're going to add to the select predicate to make sure that they only see those customer numbers or their their customer number when they log in only see their customer data so so here we do the lookup in the uh, <clears throat> in the lookup table we set the context and this line is very important because um, ultimately we're going to call this in a um, login trigger in just a moment and, they, and uh, um, other users that are not using this particular um, schema or doing completely other things we don't want it to throw up for in the login trigger so this is important um, to to have in this particular procedure so let's go ahead and run it In this next step, we're going to create a login procedure that actually calls the procedure that sets the context. So let's take a look at that. This is a simple login trigger that um, creates the or runs the set context procedure, which then sets the context. And that's why it's important to have that not null part in there in case users that are not participating in this particular schema or doing anything here um, don't uh, throw up with the, um, <clears throat> they need to proceed on and ignore the, this particular procedure. So um, simple login procedure uh, or login trigger. So let's go ahead and try it.
So in this section, we're going to get the um, going to create the get context function, and let's just start off by looking at it, and I'll explain. So in the login trigger, the login trigger ultimately assigns a context, um, namely the customer number, to the users that log in, and. Uh, um, and now we're about to create a policy associated with a particular schema and table and that particular table is going to be the customer orders table and there's going to be an extra predicate added when we do a select against um, the um, the table and it, namely it's going to be the extra predicate is going to be and where customer number is equal to the OCM context that is set notice that uh, um, I have added this section here because if there are a super user, let's say, not sys, but some other user that, that needs to look at this table without regard to the context, then um, there is no pr pr extra predicate added. Um, but for the <coughs> users, T. Brook and O. Woods, we need to add this extra um, predicate. And notice that um, this is all one big string. And I created a Varkar 400, but it's not necessarily going to be, gonna be be that large, but notice that I have to put two single quotes here and here and here and here so that the, um, the string will work within the context of the function. And uh, um, so let's go ahead and create this function now. One of the last steps we need to do now is to actually create a policy on the customer orders table. And let's go ahead and take a look at how that's done. Okay, so the customer, uh, the policy is, is done using the DBMS RLS row level security package, and we're adding a policy. We're adding the policy to the OCM, which is the schema owner, the customer orders table. We're giving it a name, a policy name called customer policy. The uh, function that we're calling is the get OCM context. It's owned by Sys, and uh, um, and this policy will be used for select only purposes. So the customers that are logging in only have select uh, authority. So let's go ahead and create that policy. Lastly, now that we've created the policy, now we just need to test it out. And so I have some scripts that do that testing. Let's take a look. Let's look at um, O Woods to start with. So um, I'm going to connect as O Woods. I'm going to look at a session, session context first. Selecting star from the session session context tells you your context that you're set, and so, and it should be set to his customer number and then um, then we're going to select from orders and we're all going to see his orders so let's go ahead and do that so his contacts or his customer number is five six seven eight and sure enough when he does a select star we only see five six seven eight let's look at, at um, T Brook the script is very virtually the same but now we're logging in as T. Brook, so let's go ahead and see him. And T. Brook is customer 1234, and we only see customer 1234's data. Um, I just happened to create a Saleo um, user, It's a, um, and I also granted him select on the OCM customer orders table, so let's just look at him. that we don't have this session <coughs> context set because <coughs> we are not part of the, the customer lookup table. So we were never assigned a session context. And when we um, run a query against the OCM table, there's no extra predicate um, that's added for customer orders. So, we, so we should see everybody's orders, and we do. 
And that's it for this particular video.